you guys hear one, why don't we get started? First off, I'd like to thank everybody for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, we'll be showing you features in the release uh, coming up in September, version 1.2, um, specifically around uh, gliders. Uh, before I hand it over to uh, Brian, who can introduce himself uh, from Axiom, uh, I do want to remind folks that you can contact us through our discourse site or through feedback on the Data Explorer tool, and we encourage that you do that. If uh, you have any questions that you think of after the presentation, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be holding these town hall meetings on a, a somewhat frequent basis uh, in between our releases and give uh, the user community a chance to give us feedback and uh, ideas on new functionality. With that, it is all yours, Brian. Thanks, Jeff. Um, my name is Brian Stone. I am a designer here at um, Axiom, Axiom Data Science. I, I work primarily on the portal. Um, Luke Campbell is also here. He works on most of the backend systems. Um, let's get started. So the uh, I'm going to be demoing some um, new features in the Data Explorer. These aren't accessible yet in the Data Explorer, but they will be um, at some point in September. Um, and please uh, chime in with any questions, comments, et cetera. Um, OK, so the first thing I wanted to go over was, uh, I think most people are probably aware of how to get around the Explorer, but um, there are a few ways you can click on Access Array Data, and then you can kind of choose what you want to look at. Um, so if you're interested in um, you know, water temperature, um, we'll find it here, at um, Pioneer, hit go, and you get a, a series of plots. So this uh, addition, you can see that now gliders also have thumbnail images. Um, so you can preview data for each glider um, alongside sensor data. Um, as you do that, you can hover over the, the glider plot and get a quick profile of data. You can click on download and access all the different download methods, or you can click on the glider itself and go into um, the traditional view. And that's a map with a, a 3D display and a curtain plot like we're looking at. And uh, we can look at that in a bit. All of the filters work here. Um, if I were to click on something else that has glider data, it will appear um, alongside sensor data. I think I clicked on the wrong one. This one doesn't happen to have glider data. Um, you can, um, let me go back real quick. Temporal searches also work. Um, so if I were to click on the time filter and zoom in on a particular period of time, I'm gonna get only those available glider plots for that time period. Um, so let's see, I didn't choose a great time period, but as I go through, you can see that it's going to update with sensor data that's available and then also glider data that's available. Next to each glider plot, there's this little map that you can click on and get a plot of the, uh, a map plot of where the glider went. Um, and so that can just give you a preview, a quick sense of where it is um, in space. Um, the next feature is a new selector. This is a new tab um, within each array. Um, it's this glider and cruise selector here. So what we're looking at now um, on the left side, where I get the same previews of plots. Again, I can hover and get um, profile data for each, as, I, as I hover across the, the glider. Um, at the top, there's a density chart that's showing where when the most glider profiles are within the data set. And then on the map, there's a density plot that's showing when the most profiles are. So if I zoom in on the map on the um, time slider, the map's going to update. The plots on the left are going to update with available gliders for that time period. And the density plot on the top is going to update. I can hover to get just a sense of how many profiles within each day are available. If I zoom in further, I'll get hourly. I'm sorry, that it stays at days. Um, zooming back out, I can also do a spatial filter. So 
So if I'm interested in a particular area, a particular transect, I can draw a polygon around that area. Again, my available data at the top updates. So I can see when data is available across the, the time span and then which gliders are available um, within that area. If I'm only interested in downloading data for the time period and area selected, I can click on this download filtered button and I get a list of the same glider plots. Each of these downloads only will download the filtered data. So if I'm interested in a small a particular area, a small area, a small period of time, I don't want to download all the data. I can go through and pick out which glider plots I want just and it, it will automatically apply those filters. Um, we have a variety of formats available, CSV, GeoJSON, KML, and Shapefile. Um, I can also change which parameter I'm looking at. So if I were to choose oxygen saturation, my map updates, my time filter updates, and then my plots also update. The last piece is a profile comparator. Um, and so we can get to that through, um, let's see, I'll choose a different, so now we're looking at coastal endurance and I can get to this by going through a sensor node or um, plot. So right now I've, I've browsed into parameters and again, I'm gonna choose water temperature. Uh, I'm gonna clear my time filter out. So we can see all the time. And I'm gonna look for a wire following profiler. So here's one. So if I click on this plot, I get the same plot, this, this hasn't updated. Again, I can get, um, you know, I can hover to get information, but there's also this new find a nearby sample and glider profiles tab. If I click on this, I'm gonna get a map of nearby um, profile data. So, um, at the top, we have a small version of the chart. I can use that to filter by time. Um, beneath that, we have a map that shows where the instrument is located. And then the blue dots show um, where profiles are located within the time period selected. So the this new button here, this is a little point selector. I can drag this across and select a, to a profile from a particular time period. Um, on the left side, let me zoom in so it's easier to see what's going on here. Okay, so now we're looking at fairly granular um, time information about the profiles available. So these bars indicate density of profiles for that particular time period, and these are our windows. So if I drag this, this uh, slider over one of these time periods, it's gonna select all profiles that happened within that hour, that's the blue line. And then it's gonna also, if available, select sensor data from within that time period. And that's the red line. So this is a way to compare um, sensor data to profile information. I'm gonna zoom back out and show a couple other filters. So if I'm interested in comparing the sensor to a different um, parameter, I can choose that. So I could choose salinity. And now we're seeing um, a salinity plot from the glider, that's the blue, compared with water temperature from the sensor, that's the red. And I can, you know, I can, I can tick through these and see, find something that I'm interested in. If I want to download the profile information, I can hit download filtered. Um, if I'm interested in looking at, I'm going to go back to water temperature. If I'm interested in only looking at um, cruise data, so discrete samples, I can choose that uh, under type. For some reason, these guys aren't loading. I'll try a different one. And so the blue line again is the discrete sample cruise data. The red line is the um, sensor data. 
Um, I'm just going to back out to the main search interface and show a different way into the cruise data because that that was also a recent information or a recent addition that'll be part of this release. There's now a cruise data um, tab in the tabular search interface. If I click on that, I get all cruise data for a particular whatever um, array I'm looking at. Um, I can hover to see the profiles. I can select the cruises. And then I can enter into each of these by clicking and I get um, my 3D view over here. These white dots are where the samples were taken. And then at the top, we get the, the, the curtain plot. Cruise data is also available through all other searches. So if I were to go to search, um, it now appears under uh, platform types. So I can select cruise data. Or if I were to be looking at, say, conductivity, it, it will appear with all other search results. So that's my run through. I'm hoping that um, there are some questions. Um, so, Stuart. And then, and so I'll, why Stuart, is you, you can talk as well. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, um, I just noticed that in your download uh, filter there, it didn't offer net CDF. And I was wondering if that was a choice or just settings or uh, if that's coming up. So that's the the system that we're using um, GeoServer to serve that data. I don't believe offers net CDF, but I'm going to look into it. Um, I can show you a different way to get to net CDF data, but you wouldn't be able to get to the filtered version. Um, so if I'm looking at a glider, and this would go for you know, anywhere within the views that I demonstrated. If you click on the title, you're going to get this full um, glider view. This one takes a bit longer to load up. Brian, while you're waiting for that to load, John Fram and Hillary Polevsky have questions in the chat. OK. Let's see. I don't see them. I only see Stuart's questions. In the chat, not in the, the Q&A. OK. I see. OK. Uh, to help folks download along paths with glider data, it would be helpful if one could select by glider line or at least see the intended glider lines for each array on the map for the new part. OK, yeah, so let me, I'll go back to the map and show that quick. OK, as far as downloads go, you get more downloads on this page. They're not filtered by time or uh, space. But you can click on downloads, and you get a lot more options up here. So you can see process.nc, um, the arrow format, which is similar, raw.nc. And then you can also get into um, Bird app. And from here, you can filter on time and bounding box and uh, create downloads. Um, if there is a need for NetCDF, we can look into, um, well, I'll definitely look into GeoServer to see if I can just add that for free. Um, but I'm not sure about polygon filters on NetCDF data. Um, OK, so going back to the spatial view, I'll go to Coastal Endurance. So currently, what we're showing, um, we are showing the cable lines, and we're showing the um, instrument locations. Um, if we had shape files for those glider lines, we could add them um, to the map. And then I guess I would either want to make this heat map semi-transparent so you could see them. Um, but I've noticed they kind of pop out um, because they have the most profiles in general. 
Um, but yeah, if we have shape files for those, we can definitely add those to the map. Um, John, does that answer your question? I did unmute you. <laughs> he typed in yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll um, I'll get the shape files to to Brian. Thank you. This is super cool. Thank you. Okay, Hillary asks, how are you handling or planning to handle telemeter versus recovered data from the gliders? Okay, so. Basically, we get the glider data from the glider DAC, the ICE glider DAC. So we just pull in whatever's available. Um, we do record what, um, I'm going to go into search. We do record what, what the collection method is. So this search tab is pretty handy if you're a more advanced user. Um, so I can subset down to all gliders within coastal endurance, and then I can just do a text search. Um, so you can see that each of these gliders has a, in parentheses, recovered or telemetered. Um, and so you can, you know, you can search on recovered. I think you were asking if you could merge the data and we don't offer that right now. That would need to be provided to the glider DAC as a data set and then we could ingest that. Um, let's see, hopefully this one doesn't take as long. Maybe I'll I'll pull up a telemeter because those are smaller. Um, when you're at a one of these glider detail pages, you get, well, this one only has the one, but all other deployments for a glider come up um, in the dropdown. Well, this one says deployment 11, so I would expect 10 others. All other deployments should show up in a list there so that you can quickly um, toggle back and forth. Is there a glossary of different download options? I also want NetCDF and want to know what the difference is between process NC and raw NC. Um, we don't currently have a glossary of um, download options. And I don't know off the top of my head, maybe Luke knows what the difference between processed NC and raw NC is. Um, they're the same size. I think those may be say that again it's uh, it's metadata i believe okay so the raw and c is as basically as it comes but then the process and c the standard name mapping is applied long name uh any of the unit conversions that we do internally so if the temperature is in kelvin we'll convert it to degree celsius Hillary, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I'm still trying to figure out how I would use the interface if I just found the telemeter data to make sure I knew that the recovered data was there as well so that I knew to download both and merge them myself. But maybe I can play around a little bit more with um, this once it's live. One thing, and this is actually available now, one thing you can do is, um, let's see, go to platform types gliders, and you can do this across the whole system or at a particular um, array. So I'll choose um, Pioneer. We've basically sort of sliced and diced the gliders in different ways. Um, and if I choose gliders here, here they're broken down by, yeah, this wouldn't solve the problem that you're having. I don't, yeah, I don't think this would solve it. It sounds like you want to group based on a, a particular glider and get all methods. Yes, because I'm thinking for any given glider deployment, sometimes there's just telemetered and sometimes there's just recovered and sometimes there's both. Mm -hmm. um, and I, most users, if both exist, will want to look at both to make sure that they're not missing a patchy part um, that exists in one but isn't in the other. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I think I would go to one of these, the search tab and search for the glider that you're looking for. So say glider 340. Um, and then just go from there and start to pick and choose um, which downloads you want to take. Um, would a deployment method filter help if you could filter on recovered versus uh, telemetered? Some users might only be able to use recovered data because the telemeter might not be high enough resolution. But I'm I'm thinking about users who might need like a an intro to how to use these data to know that both exist. That I think yeah. some users might do a whole research project not knowing that recovered data exists, right. and then be really disappointed that they thought data didn't exist. But it did, or you know, vice versa with one or the other. So some sort of this is more like instruction to user kind of thing to make sure that people know to look for both and don't accidentally miss one. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a note about that. Um, that might be something we could add to the documentation. And also, this is just really cool. Thank you so much for um, adding this functionality. Oh, good. Um, once it is live, please remember to use the, the feedback tab up here. Um, you can give us feedback on you know what you're seeing, if, if you're having a problem, if there's something you want added. OK, I see. It looks like somebody already answered the question about what type of gliders. Um, within the system, we offer whatever information we have available in this little metadata section down here. Um, and in this case, it's not giving what type of glider. Um, if you click on the metadata link, this gives more metadata available from the, the IUS glider deck. And this may have information about it, yeah. So this says platform type slocum glider. Can one use this tool to get data access endpoints to programmatically access the data from a Jupyter notebook? Yeah. So that's what, that's how I envision people primarily using this like spatial search interface. Um, so if you were to subset your data, you know, and you're interested in maybe the area around these two instrument. Um, and then you click on download filtered, you can then copy out these endpoints in whatever format you want to use, and you can paste them into a notebook. Um, and that's a process that we've talked about, you know, offering snippets of code and stuff like that. Um, but in general, this, if you were to copy this out, you could, you could just use it in a notebook or a script. Does that actually I copy think... the data to my computer or does his data stay in the server and I access it over the network? Um, it depends on where your notebook is. Um, if it's on your computer, it's going to download it to your computer. But if okay. you're using think... like a Jupyter Hub notebook, it would. I think, Mike, you were thinking, can you connect to the data and, and process in place? Was that the question? Yes, yes. Or leave so, the data in place and just extract um, directly into the notebook without having you can. a local copy of the file. Right. I believe you can You can connect into URDAP 100%. I know, I know someone was playing with that. But we also have, in the near future, we'll be doing a proof of concept with uh, Jupyter Hub to be able to do it. OK. But I know um, I saw, uh, I shouldn't call out Rich uh, by name, but I, I know one of our users, Rich, Signal has connected into uh, RDAP to do that. 
Okay. Um, does anybody else have any other questions or anything they'd like to see demonstrated? Brian, it might be helpful if you talked about when this will go live. Um, yeah, I think we're slated to go live in the first or second week of September. Um, and we hope to have a preview site out for some users um, in the next week or two. First full week of September. Um, the questions I had for people were, what can we do to make downloads more usable? Um, and I think we got some good feedback on that CDF. Um, I am curious once people start using the profile comparator, if that's usable and intuitive, how it works and what, what other features you'd like to see. Um, okay, Stuart says, hi, I'm curious when you pull data from the ICE DAC, is it a one-time poll or does it regularly repull in case these are updated? I think that's a good question. That is definitely a good question. Uh, we pull daily from the Glider DAC, so if anything gets updated, it propagates through the system as soon as the caches are invalid. So if anything's re-uploaded, it should just work. Um, we've seen some issues where if the deployment name if the glider disappears from the DAC and then it's like re-uploaded with a different file with the same deployment name, we've noticed issues in that case and we have to go and manually clear them out sometimes. But as long as it doesn't like get fully deleted and then re-uploaded, so the individual files work or I guess as long as the ERDAC URL is still linked to the data that is desirable to be ingested and function correctly as, uh, as desired and sort of in the intuitive way. It's only when the ERDAP name suddenly stop working or return errors that things go awry. OK, so um, when you said it, if a deployment is deleted, it's messed it up before. Is that um, if the deployment, the entire deployment structure is removed from the DAC or could it be in the same case where all files underneath a deployment structure are removed? Or maybe you don't even know the difference. I think it's mostly if our interface to the Glider DAC is through ERDAP. And if we query ERDAP and see that a deployment that we had previously downloaded no longer exists, um, the system is unable to deal with that case because it's like we've already downloaded some data it doesn't exist anymore and it there's really we haven't identified um the path we should take should we delete all the data locally and hope that late or should we wait and see if the url comes back later on and then fill in the rest of the missing data uh, so far it's only happened i think in two cases and in those cases we simply just we keep the data uh on our system when it was on our system and we just basically removed it links to those deployments from the portal uh, but i think in those cases if they were re-uploaded with like a different deployment name slightly different on like the timestamps, like they're only off for like a minute or two uh, and so it looked like the intent was these are the more correct ones and these because they had more metadata and they were uploaded uploaded more recently so it was intended that those deployments were the true versions of those wider deployments. Uh, and those were ingested with that issue and presented at the portal. Okay, thanks. Brian, did you have any other questions? All right now. Okay. Thanks uh, everyone for logging in. Yep, one last call for questions from the audience. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for dialing in and uh, watching the demo. 
Um, please, if you come up with any questions or thoughts, please do use the feedback or discourse and uh, uh, contact us. Thank you much.